$1.8 million over five years, his agent told Bobby Marks. He was the number five overall pick out of Kentucky in 2017. Veteran sharpshooting forward Danilo Gallinari finalizing a three-year, $61.5 million deal with the Atlanta Hawks. His agent of CAA Sports tells ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski and Stephen Adams is headed to New Orleans as part of the Drew Holiday trade. Adams averaged almost 11 points and just over nine rebounds last season for Oklahoma City. As for a few of the other deals that got done in the NBA, the Jazz reached agreements with both Jordan Clarkson and Derek Favors, who will be returning to Utah. Joe Harris is staying with the Nets after signing a four-year, $75 million deal. And Mason Plumlee is headed to the Pistons. His deal, Randy, for three years and $25 million. All right, I'll thank you. Woj is with us all morning here on SportsCenter AM. And Woj, let's talk about this Montrez yeah. Harold deal. A surprise, even to Patrick Beverly, who tweeted, what? And then a couple of choice emojis here. So fun for his soon-to-be former teammate. How did this deal come together? Well, after Dwight Howard surprised the Lakers, uh, took that offer in Philadelphia, uh, Montrez Harold needed a home. And the Lakers moved in, offered him their full mid-level exception. So now he'll go from... Uh, being, you know, that six, playing that six-man role in with the Clippers to perhaps now the starting center for the Lakers. That's one heck of a lineup they're building, uh, continuing to build with the Lakers there. And one deal that uh, L told us about is the Drew Holiday deal and how Steven Adams moves to the Pelicans as a part of that. What more can you tell us about uh, behind the scenes with a move like this? Well, you've seen now Oklahoma City has moved toward a full rebuild you know, they traded Chris Paul. Uh, Danilo Gallinari is reported is going to Atlanta. And now Steven Adams, one of the most popular players uh, in Oklahoma City's, you know, league history. Uh, he'll go now with a year left on his contract. Uh, the Thunder get something for him. They get a first-round pick via Denver as part of that larger deal, a couple second-round picks. And Steven Adams will anchor uh, that back line for Stan Van Gundy in New Orleans with a lot of young players, few vet better uh, influences locker room and a player who can still uh, play at a very high level. Talk about building a culture. He's a guy who yeah. can do that there for Stan Van Gundy. That's Adrian Wojnarowski with the very latest. He'll be with us all morning on NBA Free Agency. <laughs> this is everything, and I'm going to tell you why. Because if you're in a place like Oklahoma City, you're probably not going to get free agents. The only mm -hmm. way you're going to get players is through the draft and through trades. So this is what these draft picks are, the chance to draft those players or trade them for players. And Zach was just talking about the Thunder getting second round picks in the next few days, watch him get another first round pick, especially if they can participate in a sign and trade for Danilo Gallinari. He's not going to be back in Oklahoma City, but they could send him elsewhere. This is, a, this is team building 101, but it's almost like team building 101.2 or something yep. because he's doing this to such an extent. <laughs> I mean, e even down to the level that the year or so that you're going to probably suck, which is next year, they're not even going to have fans. I mean, that's beautiful. This is basically what Sam Hinkie was trying to do in Philadelphia, which is get as many draft picks as you possibly can, give yourself as many chances to hit on those draft picks, whether they be in the teens or at the top of the draft. Well, next year, the Thunder are probably not going to be as good, probably a couple of years here. But at some point, you become a good, nice young destination with, with, te with, with good young players that people might want to go to. And then you have all the first round picks. I feel like Adam Silver is going to be announcing. And with the 10th pick, yes, you guessed it. The Oklahoma City Thunder. Sam Presti. <laughs> Just, I mean, that, that's going to happen every, every year for the next few years. Well, Ramona, I like the point you made about the process. I think mm -hmm. it's something that we don't quite hit on enough when we talk about Philadelphia, that Sam Hinkie's original vision included the fact that when you are drafting 18 and 19-year-old kids, you are just not going to know for sure right. what they are going to turn into in three or four years. So the idea isn't just get picks near the top of the draft or in the first round. The idea was get as many as you can. So right. that even if you only bat, in baseball terms, <laughs> three or four hundred, if you have so many shots being at the plate, so many ups, you are going to get, say, in Philadelphia, end up with a Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, two young all-stars locked in on those contracts. And look, Penn, uh, Philadelphia, they whiffed on a bunch of those early picks. But again, when you have as many picks as Philly mm -hmm. amassed during that process and as much as Sam Hinkie has amassed here, you have the chance of getting those young players that you really, really want and can hit on 
Paul, if you were on that team over the next few years, how would you approach it in terms of proving yourself to the Oklahoma City Brass? Because remember, they're going to have new players coming in with mm -hmm. all these draft picks every year. And also to make your name for yourself, maybe to shop yourself to other teams around the league. Well, I think there's tremendous opportunity there, especially for a kid like Shea Gil uh, Giltress. Uh, you know, he's a young star. He has this opportunity with a Chris Paul gone. And the guys there, they know this. They understand their situation. There's going to be new players coming in and out until they find the right cornerstone players that's going to be there for years to come. Now is the opportunity for you to establish yourself as one of those cornerstone players or, or, or that player that can you can say, hey, you know, he, he really represents what, what we are as a franchise as far as hard work and, and what we do in the community. So now is the opportunity because they know that players are going to be coming in and year in and year out uh, having that opportunity also. This is everything uh, for OKC. You know, until they find those cornerstone guys, they're going to just keep rolling the dice and they have plenty of opportunities to do that. So many, so many opportunities. I want to move over to the Knicks. They cleared up $35 million in cap space, and we know they have been hunting for stars in recent years. Brian, so many times they have created cap space that has not led to anything, but it sure felt like this week that these were some smarter moves. They made a good draft pick, and I don't know. I look at that $35 million and Gordon Hayward just opted out for $35. Four million. Hmm. Ooh. Is the Knicks creating this room something, nothing, or everything? Yeah, I think it's something for sure. I mean, uh, look, the Knicks realize that salary cap space is in high demand right now. There's not going to be much of it, especially after the Hawks make a move or two. And I think if you look at what they've done the last couple days, uh, making a bunch of trip, a uh, bunch of trades on draft night to move around to get their picks, and then um, using a, making a move yesterday to take on a player, uh, Ed Davis, where they picked up a couple more draft picks. It looks like they're trying to be strategic. Now that doesn't mean that if a star all of a sudden doesn't become available, they're not going to grab them. But I think they're going to try to be strategic because, quite frankly, next year's draft and next year's free agent class are better than this year's. So going, going swinging big right now may not be the smart move. And by the way, there's a whole bunch of teams competing in the East. It may not be the worst year to not try to fight for the eighth seed. I know that's not what Knicks fans maybe want to hear, but I do think it's the prudent way of going about it. And so far, Leon Rose and his front office looks like they're following that path. Yeah, I agree with Brian. I think the Ed Davis salary dump to get those seconds was a great move. Remember, the Knicks missed a chance to do that with Andre Iguodala last year when the Warriors needed to dump him. Memphis got a first-round pick. Detroit just got a first-round pick for taking on Trevor Ariza. I think the Knicks should look at moves like that, stockpile the draft picks. That said, the one exception that I wonder if they're thinking about is not Gordon Hayward. I'm sure they're thinking about Gordon Hayward. But I kind of like the fit of Fred Van Vliet for them instead. I know Woj reported earlier he's most likely to go back from t to Toronto. I've been reporting that the whole time. I think that's true. I just think the Knicks, they're young players. Their growth is going to be stunted until the Knicks get a real point guard. And Frank Nilakina has made some progress, but I think he's more a Patrick Beverly kind of point guard, like an off-ball spot-up guy than the engine of an offense. And I just think Kevin Knox, R.J. Barrett, Mitchell Robinson would benefit so much from them getting a veteran, leader, selfless kind of guy. So if, if I were them, I would look at Fred Van Vliet, but I don't know what they're going to do. They do seem to be acting prudently, which I like. Well, look, I've, we've all heard the Gordon Hayward supposition, right? I think there's a, a couple other teams that are not being mentioned for Gordon Hayward just because of they don't have salary cap space. But remember, there's, not other, there's other ways for him to go places. Like if he wanted to go to an Indiana... They could do a sign-in trade. That's, a, that's something that's floating out there right now. Um, but I think with the Knicks, all that salary cap space, you could throw an offer at KCP. You could throw an offer at Bogdanovich. You could throw an offer at Van Vliet. You can just make teams that are trying to retain their own free agents uncomfortable. And maybe you might get one of these guys. Or maybe you become the third team in a sign-in trade that picks up a draft pick because you're able to absorb some of that salary. <clears throat> Yeah, Paul, this idea of, hey, taking a reason measured mm -hmm. approach, not trying to force your way into the East in such in a year where all these teams really have so much skin in the game. Do you recognize this Knicks team? How do you feel about this? Um, no, it's pretty I don't nice recognize. to see, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, they, they've done better with this draft, but the cap room, 
Knicks haven't had had the best luck with free enough cap room. In my opinion, they need to go the OKC route. They need to accumulate assets such as draft picks because that's the only way I feel like they're going to get that next star. They struck out on many key free agents over the years uh, to my recent memory. I mean, remember back in the day with all those promotions uh, about LeBron coming to, to New York. Uh,